The catastrophic loss from Superstorm Sandy is not all physical damage. Children, as we saw after 9-11, are often traumatized by disasters just because they have no way to put the events in perspective. Dr. Harold Kopowitz, a leading expert on child psychology and trauma, told me that there are ways to help minimize the dangers to children's mental health and reasons to be hopeful for their recovery. The overwhelming majority of kids are remarkably resilient. In fact, it is remarkable because they go through terribly stressful times and they still manage to continue to function well, they continue to do well at school, and they actually look and are well. Oh. There's a smaller percentage of kids who will have one of two reactions. One, they'll have an acute stress reaction, much more than just worry. They will be overwhelmed with concerns about the storm, about the potential of another storm, about bad things happening to them mm -hmm. that are so worrisome that they do stop functioning. They can't concentrate. They can't sleep. They lose their appetite. They're not able to have fun. And then for those kids, some of them, this will persist for weeks and sometimes for more than a month, and then it's actually post-traumatic uh, post stress disorder. And is it obvious when a child is experiencing these things, or are there warning signs that parents and other adults should be looking out for? Oh, I think it's very important, in fact, for all parents now to keep an eye on their kids, even if they were fortunate and didn't happen to be directly in the eye of the storm, or they didn't lose power, or they didn't lose their home, or, God forbid, one of their family members, but they watched TV. They heard about it. People talked about it. And now they worry about the next storm. What you watch for is simple things. Number one, what's the baseline of your children? Are they talkative by nature or are they quiet? Mm -hmm. Are they easygoing or are they naturally very sensitive? Do they eat normally? Do they go to sleep without trouble? What gives them pleasure? Do they watch baseball and really enjoy it or basketball? Mm -hmm. If there's a change in any of those behaviors, where all of a sudden there's more worry and concern, where things that they enjoyed, like a certain board game, or uh, for older kids, a certain activity, and they don't want to do it, and they're starting to withdraw, and you start to see that they're avoiding life in any way, that's a red flag that parents should really pay attention to. And what should parents and other adults be saying to kids who experienced the, uh, the storm, or like you said, who just watch it on TV and, and, and have been hearing about it? Well, I think parents should do a lot of things, and I think this is a great learning moment because there will be other storms, there will be other man-made disasters mm -hmm. and natural disasters. I think the important part is parents have to remember to be calm. They are the model. There's a great uh, statement that they always make when you get on an airplane. If there's turbulence and the mask comes down, please put it on yourself first before you put it on your child. Mm -hmm. And that means that you have to take care of yourself. You have to be realistic and calm about this. You have to stick to routines. You have to go to sleep on time. If you go to church on Sunday, you should go to church. And you should be a model mm -hmm. of routine. The second thing you have to do is you have to turn off the TV. It's kind of amusing <laughs> since we're on television. but. The, re, the, the trouble with 24-7 television is that we fill up the air with lots of images. And we, unfortunately, have to see the image of houses being destroyed or people being terribly upset. And the reoccurrence of re-watching that is very, very difficult for little kids because they don't realize it's a past event. For them, it's all over a new event. So being calm and turning off the TV are the two most important things. I think the third thing is to explore with your child what they are afraid of and what their fantasies are, usually much worse than what, they, what the reality is. And finally, Doctor, where, where should parents go to get more information about all this? Well, I think there's lots of good sources. One of them, by the way, which I really like, is Sesame Street did a wonderful, wonderful video after uh, Katrina. And what it talks about is the narrative, giving a story for kids to make sense of something traumatic, because otherwise they feel disorganized and overwhelmed. And Big Bird's the main character who <laughs> worries before the storm, is very upset during the storm, the aftermath where they've lost things, but still the resilience. And I have to tell you that the childmind.org, uh, a free website that's scientifically sound, doesn't take money from pharmaceutical companies, is a tr terrific place where we're constantly updating information and using experts from around the world who can talk to parents and give them the information that makes them feel better and wiser as parents. Well, doctor, thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Anytime.